All right, everyone, welcome back. We are joined once again with Brogue Leader, a.k.a. Sleeve McDichels, a.k.a. Joel. Welcome back. Thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, how's the uh, Rat Runner tournament going so far for you? Well, I didn't do too bad in the first round, as you know. Um, and then this uh, this event, I'm uh, I'm one for one sweeps, so doing well going into round two. I understand that's where you're at as well. Yeah, yeah. So you got the sweep first round. Yep. Cool, cool. That means uh, we could be seeing the big boy here if we keep this up. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I of that. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool, though, honestly. Definitely a, uh, you pull that one it's off. It's good to play good players, right? Like, it's always, it's always, like, really good when you get the opportunity to um, compete against someone who's like legitimately good for sure for sure yeah all right so we got we got MBN today before we get started I'd just like to go ahead and uh, say some uh, point out a couple of things on green level clearance server we got a couple of new um, channels up we got the drafts channel where we're currently planning to do a cube draft on Saturday the 20th of february that's 2021 for those who come in later but still check out that drafts channel they might continue to be able to draft stuff going on throughout the future but for now if you got some time on the afternoon uh, i believe it's uh, noon cst but get to the channel for specifics we only got four folks right now so if we can get up to eight then we'll have a full um crew otherwise we're just gonna roll with four no big deal but just wanted to give that shout out and they're planning for others in the future and then there's also a campaigns channel that we got added there where we are looking at it's just now kind of getting started up but one of the first things we're trying to do is have a, a few different groups which i believe we can do it online go through the watchdog campaign and kind of sit down at the end and discuss our experiences almost like say like a book club or something just kind of discuss the uh what our experiences were with the campaign hopefully from different groups but if not i'm just looking for somebody to go through it with me maybe a game a week or bi-weekly whatever on that front all good and also i'm just uh, looking for some folks who want to put together a core set times one plus the terminal directive uh set and just uh, because that's where that campaign, the Terminal Directive campaign starts with that card pool. And just wanted to kind of play around with that uh, card pool and see what uh, decks we could build and, and experience. Because I haven't done too much with that uh, specific card pool. So if you're interested in any one of those things and possibly some future stuff in the campaign uh, area. There's uh, fan made campaigns as well as the exploration of T terminal directive then come on over to those channels and um, hang out with us so anyway enough for the plugs there let's get into what we're doing here today all right uh, Joel so let's start out with a ridiculous and I and I mean ridiculous I'm interested in getting your perspective on it but let me tell you what my perspective is because I'm kind of the newer guy that thinks I know what I'm talking about and then I I like to get reinforced or, or, or informed that I'm an idiot by you uh, second there. So here we go. Restructured data pool. Now this one right here, from what I understand, especially right now with the card pool, this one's really hard to pull off, right? But if you pull it off, it turns into a ridiculous experience that I like to uh, almost think of like a roller coaster. You pretty much as the runner, especially if you're low on credits, turn into them clicking three times to make you blow like 10 bucks. And then if you got any sort of money, you build your money back up for them to do it again next turn, unless you have some other options going on there. And it feels like a roller coaster ride for the rest of the, uh, it can feel like a roller coaster ride the rest of the, uh, the game there. What's your experience with this one? Yeah, it's a really powerful ability. Like, um, if you, if you're lucky enough to score one of these, I've managed that 
once in the distant past, and it's <laughs> uh, it's a, a situation where basically you spend every click tracing yep. <laughs> forever because uh, yep. it's like you're just draining the runners' money if they don't have two link, then you've just got a click cost the runner money ability, which is super powerful. Um, and that can, if the runner decides they don't want to spend money, just turn into a uh, a sea source on tap, right? Yep. Like you can you can turn that into um, just a kill immediately, um, or a closed accounts, or you can yeah you could go like uh, this into closed accounts into this again, and then they're in a world of hurt trying to recover. Um, and then you can just mash this again next turn and then psychographic something like you can do a lot of really cool things with the ability um, so like there's since you're still kind of compelled to <clears throat> to run one or two five threes in MBN right now because this is your like one of the very few agendas that you have access to um, you might as well give it a shot in, in place of one of your priority requisitions, or you could even go a whole hog and try and make an agenda light deck that uses lots of them. The the big challenge with it, as with all early five threes, is that the uh, the cost for the corp to score it is like really really high. It's a really hard score pattern to achieve, um, and you have to signal it. And the cost for the runner to steal it is identical to the cost for them to steal a breaking news. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so the risk versus reward is kind of skewed heavily in the runner's favour. Um, and this is kind of a thing with five threes. For for a really long time, they're kind of they have this design paradigm of going. We'll give them. Like the the point of a five three is uh, it gives you a more powerful ability than a four two would, but not too much more powerful because it also gives you an extra point. But so it's not going to be like it's not going to be like mandatory upgrades powerful, but it's going to be slightly more powerful than private security force. Um, um, but it, that doesn't really account for the fact that it's easy for the runner to get them still, and you have to signal it to the runner. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, so five threes are still kind of a liability in a deck. Like the 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 reason I'd say is say go for it anyway is that like it's a good ability and you are compelled to include five threes in your deck at the moment. So, yeah, no, for so sure. Why not? Yeah, um, I I actually um, tried to run one of those that you're talking about, one of those uh, agenda light decks. I think it had maybe eight nine agendas in it, and I tried to run a NBN with this card pool for restructured data pool, and the whole point was to score one of those and start the train. But uh, it never it it came out about probably like one in ten games that I could actually score one, and even then, if it was too late in the game and they had decent money, they could still you couldn't just continue to blow your whole turn uh, zapping them with money because they already had enough to keep uh, putting pressure on you. So yeah, it's exactly like it's it's basically it, it's not easy right now to run an agenda light deck. Yeah, because like runners are as inevitable as they always will be um like it's baked into the f fundamental design of the game that runners have a late game advantage mm -hmm. um and your goal as a corp is to kind of minimize that uh, <laughs> yeah. or or to score out before they reach that and to just push the late game later and later and the issue with running an agenda like deck as well it means that the runners are getting less value out of random access you're also getting less value out of random draw. Like you're not finding your agendas yeah. to score, um, which means that you're not, um, you're just not consistently uh, extending the mid game and you're finding yourself trying to score out in the late game where you just get walked over. Now, That's did the, you ever, uh, did you ever, was there ever a time where a restructured data pool deck was uh, super nasty in competitive play? I don't remember one, but um, like I should say again, like I started playing um, competitively in like early lunar cycle. So right. at that point, like MBN agenda suites were pretty fixed at a ten agenda, uh, only two pointers and one pointers. Mm -hmm. 
kind of sweet. Yeah. Um, where, where it was like every NBN deck ran exactly the same uh, three Astro scripts, three Beals. Yeah. Um, and like NAPD contracts and then breaking users to make up the numbers. Um, well, I'm challenging you to revise history here. This time through, <laughs> this time through, you should try and. Uh, Show me how to make a restructured data pool deck that's just brutal around lunar or data and destiny time frame. Yeah. <laughs> the, the deck to score out, score this out with, I did so out of it was out of NEH, and I was just using NEH's um, ridiculous uh, seventeen influence to slot loads of stupid traps mm -hmm. because that was kind of the mood i was in yeah. so um so basically i just bluffed this as a dune bug <laughs> like like put uh, it behind some ice and then, and then didn't res the ice and my opponent was like mm, maybe not actually and then because uh, <laughs> they weren't quite ready to deal with the consequences of, of whatever trap it could be mm. um so so yeah i just i bluffed it out in that extremely original core set way that usually never works um i, I, so I bet I'll, I'll see if i can get it to work properly at yeah. some point but yeah i bet when F ffg deployed this one and they saw what could happen whenever somebody actually scored it they probably uh took care not to give this one anything too good to accompany it right i mean because like like you said it's hard to score but when you score it the the effects on the game can be quite devastating already you know what i mean like it can turn it sometimes it doesn't even feel like netrunner anymore it just feels like okay let me gain some money so they can take it from me next turn and we'll do this over and over again for a while you know <laughs> it's as close to a prison deck as you can make in uh in pre mumbad cycle yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so i have we've talked about this one way too much we got to get to moving here but it, it is a very interesting card that i like so all right into some money here marked accounts for me i tried again i ran a, a mbn deck uh for another uh for the reboot format for this uh f for this card pool here and i tried to run the mbn and marked accounts it's it's definitely not a terrible card because of the trash cost but it it's almost just a hint slow for me personally especially at this point but it might just be my incompetency so i'm gonna turn it over to you to see if i'm right on this one or not we kind of agree about it like i've always found it a bit fiddly i know like there are there are competitive players who like whose views i respect who think marked accounts is fine and I think it probably is fine, but um, but yeah, I've always found it a bit awkward just um, just having to find the clicks to use it. But that five trash cost is fantastic, and the zero res cost is is also very nice. Um, like you don't really have to commit anything beyond your time to it, mm -hmm. um, but it's just finding your time to commit to it that I've always found a little fiddly and and have never really got the knack for. Yeah. But again, it still it still can definitely work. Like you said, you you basically got two free clicks because you would spend two credits on a pad campaign to res it. So you can get six money for two clicks. For, well, actually, that'd be three one to install, but you got to install a pad campaign. So for two clicks, you could technically get two six money out of this before you started paying more than a ca pad campaign for it, right? It just feels a little funkier because you're actually having to pay those clicks instead of just using some already existing money. That's assuming that the that you're paying for the pad campaign res with clicks for credits, which ideally you're not. But um, but yeah, in principle, that's the idea. Um, uh, I think in practice, the the main utility of marked accounts is it costs more to trash. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, and that means that it can feed into a trace strategy. Yep. And and the other thing, that's a good point. And the other thing that does make it not terrible is that nobody, a lot of people aren't going to trash it, which means even if it yeah. sits there a couple of turns and you don't get any money off of it, but then all of a sudden you got an extra click to do nothing because you're trying to wait for it, you can just click that bad boy and just have yourself three credits coming up slowly with some drip. So it gives you a little flexibility there. But like you said, with MBN, you're usually trying to push fast anyway, so you're not really necessarily looking to slow down. Yeah, it's. I think it's a really good 
a, a good piece to have on your board uh, to use whenever you would click for a credit. Mm -hmm. Like when, whenever you're sort of stuck on your last click or, or your second click with like knowing that drawing isn't really your best line. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yep. That is some flexibility there, I'd say. And, and again, you got two clicks worth to get to the point where it costs you as much as a pad, a pad campaign. You make six off of it. So it's not the end of the world for sure. It's just you have to, it has to fit your play style, I think. It has to fit your strategy to, to run it. So, all right. Uh, it's, it's not fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel you. I, I haven't. I only have so much uh, processing power in this brain of mine, and that's just extra thought process that I don't necessarily want to spend on it. But, yep. All right. So TMI here, the ice. I this ice right here. This one I feel like, and I've only I've played it some, and I and again I could be totally wrong, but for me personally, from what I've experienced. This one right here is good if you can catch it at the beginning of the game when the runner's broke. But as soon as the runner has money, you're talking about uh, this thing gets really tough to, to res and pull off without them just breaking the trace and just, you know, knocking it back down. So I don't I don't necessarily love it, but it definitely has if you can pull it off then you're dealing with a five strength barrier which is absolutely awesome so where am i at on this am i on point or am i off a little I think bit right yeah, yeah like the trace two is it's too low mm -hmm. <laughs> um like it um the the it, it's kind of a similar situation to snowflake um in the uh, Gentechi cards mm -hmm. um is that you've got this barrier that has that's kind of a little bit conditional um that that's technically stronger than its cost um but also that is porous in a way that can cost you a lot of money as the corp um like like the sort of the best case scenario at the moment is that you're uh, making news which means that it's a trace four um, and um, and so a runner with zero link pays four to get through this, which is uh, the same as they would pay to get through it with a corroder if they didn't eat the trace. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and any other credit spent there is is one for one. Like it's not helping either of you to spend more uh, unless and, uh, unless like the runner is on like five in which case maybe you want to pay a couple so it stays rezzed um and that might be worth it for you but but otherwise if it gets derezzed then you've got to pay another three up front to res it again and that'll happen again and the runner will know what it is which means they'll typically be it. running it yeah. on occasions that that yeah that they can derez it again um that it would be a bad idea for you to um pay into it so yeah it's a it's a difficult one. Um, that trace should be higher. Um, I think mm -hmm. the reboot version of it, the trace is double. Yeah, that'd be good, especially with them making news. They got to pay six. That'd be right on. Um, yeah, so it, I, I guarantee you, this one right here definitely uh, became a no, a no once Eli came out in the following three packs here, probably, huh? You just go ahead and splash Eli versus this bad boy and get the same tax. Yeah. So... Um, so let's pop up window. Now this one here on the surface, it took some, it took me hearing other people say this thing is a major tax to really understand how much of a tax it is. It's, and I don't still fully understand it, but I've been using it and it is absolutely a blast to get that money from some pop-up window especially for your fast advanced decks that you generally need a lot of money i think that is definitely a uh, a key component here is is continuing just to kind of tax that and uh charging and hopefully charging the runner some money too yeah like pop-up window doesn't cost you anything to res every time the runner like walks into it they pay a credit uh, or rather, you you gain a credit, and typically they will pay a credit unless, like, once they've got Yog down, they don't. But 
Um, but you still gain that credit. So so until Yog is down, it's a two credit swing every time they hit it um, that puts you like up. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and when Yog is down, it's still a one credit swing that puts you up. So you just put it wherever you think the runner's going to run a lot. Like you put it um, in front of your Sand Sand City Grid server that you just keep jamming Sand Sands in to cost them a fortune to trash because uh -huh. they have to, and uh, and every time they run through it, you make it they make it easier for you to score things off your Sand Sand City Grids, right? Yeah. Um, or like they make it easier for you to res other ice. Um, it's. Uh, and like it's only one influence, so it's a really, really easy splash. Um, I'm running, uh, I think, two of these in my HP at the moment, mm -hmm. um, just because it's just it's like a pad campaign that just sits on R and D. <laughs> and and another thing that's really good about it, right? Because I'm actually running three of them myself, is that you're able to slap that thing out in front of headquarters, and uh, or any other of your of your servers kind of bluffing like don't come in here and you can sometimes scare some runners with it but when they finally run it you're like cool i just made a buck right when i needed it so it really gives you a a little bit of a a, a free kind of ice to throw out there with no worries if they forge activate it or anything like that or what's going to happen and that's nice to have in your deck as well it can be a liability on hq against criminal though um like um i have been on both sides of uh, exploiting a pop-up window to get extra value out of Siphon. Like, run into a pop-up, then jack out, or just access, maybe. Then run into a pop-up again, and just get an access, and then Siphon. Because <laughs> now they're on five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty good. I have, so, to, keep, so I have yeah, to keep that like in it, mind. Yeah, you've got to be careful about putting those on HQ. You kind of want something else to discourage them from just jacking out after the pop-up and stuff or mm -hmm. from you definitely want something else anyway because you want something that you can actually stuff a siphon with oh yeah for sure so all right let's get to uh big brother now in the reboot version this one gives them four tags which is absolutely phenomenal i think this card becomes really good if you can get one tag next thing you know they're up to five You've got a couple of turns to work some things out with your tag situation. Uh, at this current, at the current state of the original card, though, we're dealing with if the runner's tagged, give the runner two tags. It's not, um, it's, it's not amazing, amazing, but it can definitely, uh, depending on the situation, kind of give you a little bit of a, ability to give you some time to maybe hunt something down that you need, like a scorched earth or something like that to find, depending on their money and all, and maybe have an additional turn or get the or get the tags you need for a psycho graphics, right? And uh, I think for future cards end up getting you more uh benefits for having additional tags so it'll probably come out a little bit more did this one ever become a big deal in the nbn uh scene not that it was ever a big deal i've seen it included like in in competitive decks as like a one-off every so often mm -hmm. but like um I, th I feel like i don't really know what combo uh like ffg were imagining with this card like it seems like like giving the runner additional tags right now the the value of that is psychographics because nothing else cares how many tags you have everything is just if the runner is tagged um so so what you do with this is either the runner tags themselves on their turn in which uh, and leaves themselves tagged in which case they've um your quits in because you can play this and then you can psycho something big out but otherwise, um, what do you do? You see source, and you play this, and then you install the thing you want to psycho, and then the runner has a turn where they clear two tags and run the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Again, see it's, what they were planning there. It's got to be perfect scenario where the runner wouldn't have enough money to clear all the tags, and it'd give you an additional turn with tags or something like that. You know. It's... definitely C source closed accounts big brother is is a power play yeah i think i think um but then that's a three card combo so it's a bit bit of an ask yep 
Yep, definitely. So, looks like that's another one uh, that didn't quite have what it needed. But I re how do you feel about it with four tags, though? Given so, tags is terrifying. Like if that if 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 it was seesaws, then uh, basically that's seesaws into hard hitting news. Um, <laughs> but you, but only one of them has to trace. Yeah. That's um, that's incredibly strong. Um, so um, yeah, like I th I think that that would like I um, I th I think that that definitely switches on the plays that this was probably intended to switch on. Mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. Specifically, stock graphics. Yep. All right. So last card here. I don't think I've played this one, so I'm actually going to read it. Shallow City Grid. Whenever there is a successful trace during a run on this server, give the runner one tag. So I haven't ever played it. I haven't ever seen this one. I'll have to let you fill me in on this one here. It's a big old trash cost. Got to respect that. And it's, it is a guaranteed one tag. Um, so you got to respect that too. Like you can, I think you can reasonably, um, like runners shouldn't be running last click really, um, at, uh, at this stage in the game anyway, but sometimes, sometimes you're kind of compelled to, and this means that they start your turn tagged and big brother is worthwhile. Um, but, um, otherwise then you're just taxing them with an extra tag. Um, it's also not conditional access, like it's not an ambush, so um, so you can make it, it does a similar job to putting a data raven on your um, HQ to make siphon more annoying. Mm -hmm. um, so like it's a decent card, and as I say, six trash is huge. That's so expensive. Yeah. So um, like the runners got to make when they when they first take a tag from this, they've got to make a quite difficult choice like you're definitely forking them economically there to say Eight like credits. do you do you do you trash this and then clear the tag or do you just suck it up and accept that every time you're running the server you're getting a tag um and that's i th i think that that's not an easy choice to make especially because just in the short term you've made a successful run um so you don't really want to be going low on credits because your opponent could have seesaws yep so so what kind of uh what kind of setup would you use this car like what kind of ice would you throw in front of it what what you'd use it for say a remote server or you more for centrals what have you seen it used for um i've not seen it in the wild that much but um but where i would put it is i would put this on centrals just to make random accesses way more irritating mm -hmm. in the same way that i in the same way that i like putting ravens on all of the servers that I don't like the runner to run a lot. Um, like, I think this is this would be great on HQ just to stop those pokes from being really worthwhile. This would... I, um, I, don't, I don't think I'd put it in a remote. I mean, firstly, it's a region, which means it's going to be conflicting with that space with Sansan, um, which, if you're an MBN, is definitely your better region. Um, and if you're importing a region from MBN, you're probably importing that one before you're importing this one, because otherwise you're also importing tag punishment as well, and it gets very complicated. Maybe you put this in Wayland, I don't know. But um, but you have to get a successful yeah, trace, right? You, you got to get a successful trace to pull it off, so which means you got to have something that initiates a trace. Yeah, I think you, you maybe put this behind like a TMI. And TMI does the job, but um, it's uh, yeah, like that six, that six trash is so so nasty. But yeah, it's very conditional. So so uh, what tracer stuff? I guess like you've got Hunter, which isn't too bad. Caduceus, Kate. Caduceus, Caduceus. I think you could maybe get get some mileage out of. I suppose the tricky thing with this is like what you're saying is uh to the runner like you're probably paying into every trace that happens right but at the moment maybe the runner already is <laughs> how, how many traces is the runner just letting fire like i think early game you definitely let hunter traces fire 
um, because like it, it's strong ice and you might not have your sentry breaker out, but also it lets you through, so who cares? Um, but you're not going to let a data raven ever have a successful trace. Um, so it's kind of... Yeah, I suppose it's kind of relying on TMI and Hunter and no one plays Shadow. Why would you play Shadow? So I can't think of anything else that would trace. Yeah, I take that back. It's rubbish. Hmm. Yeah, but once you... <laughs> <laughs> but once you get a bunch of trace stuff, I guess somebody could probably make like a jank deck or something like that that had a whole bunch of trace ice and just pile it in front of it and, you know, cause some damage maybe. I don't know. I think I think you definitely to make this good you need tracers that fire like consistently so you need like you need to just leave a TMI on res in front of it for that opportune moment yeah um so you don't res the TMI whenever they run it instead you just you just leave it there unresed until the time is right that you can definitely land that trace and then You've got a res TMI and you've got a tag on them. Um, but that's only going to fire once, like so the whenever's not really paying off. Um, otherwise, like you're waiting for troll to come out, really, to like a trace on encounter to make this worthwhile. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know how to play this thing. So we're just going to move on and let people uh, uh, show us, I guess, because. Uh, anyway, well, for MBN, yeah, someone kills me with that card. <laughs> yep, you're hoping for today the that they show you how it's done. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens here. So for me, looking at what MBN got in these first three packs, which obviously they got less than most of the other uh, factions. Most factions got eight cards. This faction only got six. But from what I'm looking at here. I really only care about for my particular uses is pop-up window and the rest of it. Uh, I don't think it really, you might could put together a fun deck with it for MBN, but I'm not importing any of these into any other factions. And really, if I'm running an MBN deck, I might, I'm definitely throwing in a pop-up window. I might throw in a big brother, but probably not at this point. And I might throw in a couple of marked. I definitely run probably run two, three marked accounts just because the NBN's hurting at money anyway at this point. So anything helps, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you might as well try slotting a restructured data pool yeah. in place of a priority requisition uh -huh. just for fun. For sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but if you pull that off, then you're gonna have a blast just torturing a, a runner for the rest of the game, <laughs> and actually getting to use your ability every turn, right? with making yeah. news that's some real value yep all right so that's mbn we're coming back with wayland and then the final three uh neutral cards here so we'll catch y'all next time uh anything before we go joel from you no slot pop-up window it's good yep amazing all right catch you next time